In this Blender Python tutorial, we'll be diving into creating a custom operator for your custom panel. We will define properties for this operator and tackle some hands-on exercises. Hey, I'm Victor Stepanov. I'll be guiding you through this Blender Python tutorial. This is the second part of a tutorial series where we're working on a custom panel. If you're just joining us, I've provided a link in the description under initial code. You can open that link in your favorite browser Click on raw, select all the code, and copy it. Go back into Blender and let's navigate into the scripting workspace. Click scripting and then hit new and then paste in the code you just copied. This is the code that defines a, the custom panel and it's right here, this class. It defines the layout and we register and unregister that panel down here. Up here we define the add-on that we went over in the previous video. I'll recommend checking that out, how that works. And now you can just run the script and check out the panel right here on the sidebar of the 3D viewport right here. We have these buttons uh, defined right here. Now, if you followed the previous video, you can go ahead and enable the add-on that we created by searching for the under my custom panel and clicking that uh, checkbox to allow us to enable it. All right, so now you have that custom panel and here's a cool trick that you can do if this was this is already an add-on. You can right click on any of these buttons and then hit edit source. And uh, at the bottom, you'll see that um, my custom panel uh, open it in the text editor. So now if we go into the scripting workspace and instead of hitting new, you can search for that code right here. So it is exactly that file that was installed in the previous video. So pretty cool, right? And now I can update and uh, now I can continue to update this uh, Python file and allow us to automatically update the add-on itself as well. All right, let's get started. For the functionality of our operator, I'm going to be keeping things simple. We're just going to be adding a monkey head into the scene. We're going to be applying a subdivision surface modifier to that monkey mesh and then shading that mesh smooth. And that's it. We'll add some properties to configure the monkey head size, the levels of subdivisions in the modifier and so on. So make sure to stick around until the end. Okay, now I'll start adding the definition for our operator. I'm going to uh, define it be between the import BPY and our class that defines a panel. So I'm going to define a new class and define the operator, the class name for this operator, which will need to include the category, the OT for operator, and the name of our operator. And here's the class definition. Again, uh, this is the category. Uh, this is OT stands for the operator, the name, and we're going to be inheriting from the operator uh, class. And I've defined a documentation string to explain to anybody who's going to be using this operator what uh, this is supposed to uh, do. All right, uh, now we need to define some uh, Blender specific properties that Blender will use to identify our operator. And here's the code. Uh, I'm defining the ID name for our operator. It's going to be mesh.addSubdivMonkey. This will follow right after BPY ops. And this is just the label for our operator. Now we need to define an execute method uh, that will be running uh, the logic of our operator. And here it is. Uh, that's the name. We're passing in the self, the instance data uh, for this particular class, and we're passing in the context. We're going to keep the body of this method without any functionality for now. I just want to show you how we're just registering. So no functionality added just yet. And we need to return a set that contains uh, the word finished like so. And this concludes our basic definition of our operator. Now we need to go ahead and register our class uh, right here where we're registering our panel. And here's the registration. And we also would need to add the unregister. Actually, add, add it above here. Okay, with this, we are ready to run our script and check if we can actually execute our operator and find it in the interactive Python console uh, right here. 
Let's go ahead and run our script. And now if we type in BPY ops, remember that I said that uh, the name right here, this right here will go after BPY ops, and that is exactly that. So mesh. And then if we start typing in add, and then I'll, I'll press tab to autocomplete, and you can see that right away. We have that sub dip monkey operator. Pretty cool, right? And here you go. You can see right away the uh, documentation string that I added right here. And look at that. It's all coming together. And if I just close the parentheses and hit enter, and you can see that this method returned a finish. So this is exactly this right here okay now that we have our operator working let's go ahead and add it to our custom panel uh, and again you will find it right here in the sidebar of the 3d viewport and i'm going to go ahead and use that id name so this right here and i'll go ahead and add another layout right here so i'll add this so I'll just copy that to add a new row. I'll replace this with our ID. I'll update the name like so. And actually, you know what? Uh, so that's the name. And now I also want to add a separator right here to show you how you can separate different buttons so they'll be visually uh, spaced out. For example, if you have different functionality in the panel, and this is done with self layout and then separator. You'll see this uh, line right here as I run our script. All right, uh, that looks like everything should work. And let's go ahead and rerun our script. And look at that. You can see that there is now uh, some space, spacing between our button that we added and the other three buttons. And this is exactly that. Uh, separator. Of course, if I click on this uh, button, nothing really will happen because nothing is contained in our operator. So we didn't define any functionality here. Let's go ahead and update our script. And the easiest way to get that code for adding a monkey head into our scene is actually just do it by hand. Let's go ahead and do that in the 3D viewport. I'm going to delete everything by hitting AX and then selecting delete. Uh, I'm going to hit shift A uh, to add the mesh and then I'm going to look for the monkey and I'll add it right here. I'll scroll down, I'll scroll down in the info panel right here and just copy that code and just paste that in right there. I will remove all the parameters except the size and now I also want to apply the subdivision surface modifier and I'll do that um, so I have our monkey selected. I'll go into uh, the modifiers and then find the subdivision surface. I'll set that. I'll update the uh, viewport levels and the render levels. So we have the commands for those. And you can see as I update the modifier, uh, I'll see these updates going into the info panel. So it's just an uh, easy way to kind of get that code. So I'll get those three last commands. So adding the subsurface modifier and those two commands. So I'll paste those in right here and also i'll just click right click on the mesh and hit shade smooth get that command as well and just paste that in like so we're just copying and pasting perfect all right and now you can see that we have our base functionality uh available let's actually go ahead and run our script so let's see if everything looks correct let's rerun our script so we're re-registering our custom panel now after i click this button we should uh, get a, a monkey head that's going to be uh, that's going to have a subdivision surface modifier applied to it and it's, it would be shaded smooth so and look at that you can see that it is pretty uh, smooth exactly and you can see in the modifiers uh, tab we can ha we have that subdivision uh, surface modifier applied already so you can see how already you can uh, add basic operators to improve your workflows, right? With just this basic setup. And before we move on, I want to move all this code, all this functionality into a separate function. So we only have the operator logic in here. So I'm going to just go ahead and press Control X to cut that code. And I'll create a new function up here. I'm going to 
paste that code in. And let's take a closer look here. Uh, I've called it add subdiv monkey object. I'm passing in a size, the uh, subdivision of viewport levels, the and the subdivision render levels. I'll go ahead and apply this uh, where it's applicable. So that's the uh, viewport levels, and this is the render levels. Uh, and let me go ahead and call this from the execute right here. We got the 2.0. Let's set the subdivisions of viewport to two, and the subdivisions uh, in the for the render layer uh, for the render uh, at four. All right, and this should be exactly the same functionality, but we have moved it into a separate function. And notice how uh, compact this is. We're just going, so we're just defining our operator and we're just calling into a function. So this is nice and clean. Uh, you don't really need to think what's going on here. And it's actually very easy to use this in your other scripts. Maybe you don't wanna use this in an operator. You can see if I would, would have kept this in here, I would need to figure out a way to kind of use that operator. This is a very good way to kind of keep things clean and make just a minimal amount of code in the execute. Only the things that you really need is an operator. Okay, let's make sure that everything is still working. Uh, let me rerun that script. Delete that, and you can see that the monkey is still there. All right, now let's define a custom property for our operator so we can control the size of our monkey head. And here's that custom property, and I'm using the BPY props a float property and float is a number with a decimal point so this for example uh, is a float i'm naming that property uh, size so this is going to be the human readable uh, version of that that as someone will see in the ui of blender i'm adding the description and i'm setting a default value and now i can use that mesh size right here instead of now this two, I'm, I'm gonna use self and then dot mesh size. And actually, you know what? Let me set it to four to make it uh, seem different so that actually something's changing. Let's go ahead and rerun our script. Everything is working. Now let me delete that monkey and then rerun. Uh, just press that button and you can see that the monkey head is a lot bigger than it was. Now you might ask, uh, okay, this is great, Victor. What's the point of adding, going through the trouble of adding this, right? And just using it right here. Well, actually you can start using it uh, when you're redoing, rerunning this operator. And I'll show you how that's done uh, by defining uh, some options. And here are the options. So register is the default. These options will be set to, and the undo will allow us to run the redo panel. You'll see that in just a, minute but let me go ahead and rerun our script delete that monkey click this uh, button again and you can see at the very bottom left of our viewport we have this panel right here so that is actually available to us because we added this undo uh, option right here now uh, when we start modifying the slider remember i defined the size property the size uh, float property now I can uh, interactive, uh, interactively uh, update that size. Pretty cool, right? And if you're enjoying this tutorial and learning something new, make sure to hit the like button. I'll greatly appreciate it. Okay, at this point, let's make sure to save our work by going in and hitting text and then save, or saving as if you're just joining us. And now it's time for our exercises. And for your very first exercise, I want you to create two properties that will set the uh, subdivision of viewport levels and the render levels. So create two properties uh, right here. Keep in mind that float is not the only property that you can use for your properties of your operator. There's other ones that you can explore in the Blender documentation. So I want you to try this on your own. Pause the video now and come back as soon as you tried. All right, and this is how I would have done it. And if you try to use the flow property, you might have run into issues. 
where it would tell you that you can't really use a floating point number uh, to define the viewport or the rendering uh, subdivision levels. And to fix that, you would need to use the int property. Um, I've also added some extra things here, uh, and that is defining the minimum and the maximum values that our property can actually set to. The same thing I've uh, done for the rendering levels. I defined a minimum and maximum there. Created uh, the name, set the name and the description, and then used uh, those uh, two new properties uh, right here. All right, let's go ahead and run our script. And now uh, this uh, would update our panel. I'm gonna delete our monkey, hit that button again. And now you can see that we have the size. We can define the size. We can set the subdivision levels in the viewport. And you can see the maximum would be three and the minimum could only be uh, one. Uh, the same thing for the rendering. So there's the minimum of three and the maximum of seven. Pretty uh, neatly done. So now we can uh, control the range. So we, our users won't enter some value that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. And for your second exercise, I want you to make the shade smooth that we're doing right here optional. So we would need to be able to control if we want to shade smooth our mesh or not. Okay, go ahead and pause the video now and try this on your own. Okay, and this is how I would have done it and define a new property uh, called shade smooth. And this is a bool, uh, Boolean property. Uh, of course, you could probably use an int property and go between zero and one. And kind of gets uh, set some set up some logic uh, in our uh, add subdiv monkey object function, but uh, I decided to just go with a true or false value with a boolean, and uh, that will be just uh, represented as a checkbox in our UI. And I go I went ahead and passed that shade smooth as another parameter right here, and I will just setting it or just passing it right here and i'm creating this if statement uh, to control whether or not we want to run this shade smooth operation let's go ahead and run our script uh, let's go ahead and clean that up and rerun our uh, operator and now you can see that we have another uh, checkbox right here right uh, and now we can go ahead and toggle that and you can see that our monkey as shaded smooth or not depending on the values of our checkbox. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, check out this video right here. For more tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.